live from the Oracle Conference Center in Redwood Shores, California. It's The Cube at the Next Generation Engineered Systems launch event. Brought to you by headline sponsor, Oracle. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here for a final wrap up of the Oracle launch event. We've been here since 10 a.m. Going, going through and Larry Ellison's keynote at one. The Cube, crowd chat, the whole team's been here. Uh, really getting them down and dirty, Dave, on all the announcements. An interesting event, a launch event. Um, let's break it down. I think the key to success here is Larry Ellison made this happen. Yes. Very intimate event, small venue. Um, good, what'd you say, what's your rank? We'll scale uh, one to 10. A solid seven or eight, and it was good. I think, uh, but I think it, but my, my impression is, John, that the, the event underscores that hardware is now software led, you know, number one. Uh, number two, to survive in this business, you got to spend money on R&D, and you got to get that R&D into a product pipeline. And not every company can do that. I'll, I'll cite three companies in the sort of hardware, software led, even cloud business. Uh, First two, EMC and Amazon. What do they do? They announce their products rapidly. EMC's mega launches. And they actually ship them. Amazon, and they translate their R&D into products. Oracle is now on a very similar vector with its sort of integrated systems business. So you look around here, you see all these products. You know, <laughs> they love appliances here. And so you're seeing different appliances for different use cases, different workloads. Sales guys getting that th those in their bag. They position them with customers. You've now got this momentum behind them this is a company that is driving R&D into product pipeline, and that translates into revenue, into profits, and into market cap. I think, Dave, one of the things that impresses me about this is that you know, we've been covering Oracle um, at Oracle Open World now five years, right? So we've seen the transformation, and you know, we saw them in, when the wind was kind of shifting. You know, to use a sailing analogy since Larry's a big sailor. The calmness and the shifting of the wind, I think, made them realize that we better be on the right tack here, Oracle. And I think Larry sees that as a gamer himself, he knows what's going on. And so we saw that shift, it was almost that awkwardness that one year was silent, Larry was kind of like, you know, polished, but yet this, uh, it just wasn't like hitting hard. And then all of a sudden it's as if an awakening happened. That next year, 2011, you saw Oracle, 2011, 2012, 2013, 2014, the cadence of turnaround, it's as if he lost the America's Cup and wanted to win it back. And those two years, he saw it just chip away at it. And that's, that's the sun, that's the sun years. And I think you've seen a different swagger with Oracle since then. And I think, you know, we talked to Neil Mendelson, he's coming back and these are, they're attracting talent back. So, you know, I used to be critical of Oracle. You know, hey, they got the extracting the rents. They had a good business, I mean, a great business model. But they're innovating, this innovation, this kind of engineering culture. The question is, can the swagger translate to execution? Well, and I think that, I mean, it's, it, the, the extracting the rents is fair. The Oracle's continues no, they have, to they, extract they have rents. value, they extract but, rents from the but value. But what's new today is we're going to be the low priced, you know, low, low cost leader, and which I think is a, a no brainer strategy because they're going to make it up on, on, on software, layering software on, on, on top of that. And so, I, I don't know, I think that, um, again, generally you're seeing, it's the fruits of the R&D labor are very, very difficult. You saw this at HP. Um, when Mark Hurd was there, you know, he was, he was criticized by a lot of outsiders. He did a great job from Wall Street's perspective, but he was criticized for squeezing R&D. You're seeing now HP fight back through that. EMC's a company that's always done a nice balance of R&D and, and acquisitions. Oracle obviously spends a lot of money in R&D. Look at Fusion Apps. It was a huge, you know, nine-year project um, and, and it does tons of acquisitions as well. IBM is a company that's been challenged to do this, to take R&D money. IBM spends a ton on R&D, but to get it into product. Look at its, look at IBM's storage business, for example. It lacks a pipeline, so they're having to sort of retool that entire business. And, and so, even though IBM's very good at acquisitions, so, but Oracle is you know, hitting all cylinders. You and I right are now. very competitive people. We both love sports. Larry, also a very competitive person. If you look at him, right, and he always mentions this story, I knew Steve Jobs, and he brings in Mark Hurd, who was a very competitive person. He's a gamer himself, great operator. You know, Larry talks about his relationship with, with, the, with, the, uh, with, the, uh, with Steve Jobs back then when he was alive. And if you look at those two guys, I think it's interesting, both competitive. Uh, and I, what I like about this event is I just like going to Oracle events because Having Larry Ellison at his age, you know, making jokes about his eyesight, 
doing what he's doing to win, right? He's tr he's playing to win, and Jobs did that, right? And winning was defined not by money; it was defined by certain other outcomes, great products resulting in sales and happy customers, right? So, love that. I love that mindset. I mean, he there is, is a, he is a senior CEO in industry. There, there and is he's a net, playing to win. What don't you like about that? There is a net worth leaderboard, but you got to love that. No, no, I mean, of course and, he's got and, a leaderboard. And board. you got to love that about you know guys like Michael Dell uh, as well. You know, you know Larry, <laughs> like you say, self-deprecating jokes about his eyesight, but he's engaged. I mean, you see that from all his senior management. He's, Oracle's able to attract really good people. You look at Safra on the finance and M&A side, Heard is, you know, by all accounts, one of the best sort of customer-facing executives in the business. Obviously, Oracle's attracting, you know, we heard John Fowler say but a big do you part agree, of Do you job. agree that he's playing to win? Oh, there's no question about it. I mean, I mean he's, you know. You think he might take a little hiatus a couple of years in there? Well, you know. I don't know. I mean, I, yeah. I don't. I don't see. I mean, he's energetic. He looks good. I think he's, he's playing he, to win. He's engaged. Yeah, he's playing to win. I mean, define playing to win to me is. is and Fowler said, I thought said this best. We're we're trying to build best of breed feed products all, all along the stack. Now you can debate whether or not we're best of breed. I would say they're, they're OVM is not best of breed. VMware is best of breed. But okay, we're going to invest and we're going to do things to bundle it in, hide some of that complexity. But we want to be the best at every layer of the stack. That's our goal. When we hire engineers, that's what we're trying to do. I think that's attractive to people. It's a, it's a good goal. Now, now, who doesn't want to do that? What companies, of course, IBM wants to do that, EMC wants to do that, you know, Microsoft wants to do that, but Oracle has a unique strategy in that full stack approach that nobody else has taken. I think Oracle's business is pumping, and I think they've got a great M&A budget. I think the leadership is engaged, and I think the product strategy is very sound. I think going into engineered systems, but realizing that the cloud is happening is critical. So it's going to be interesting to watch, and I think they've got a great R&D focus that's clear, and they spend the money. They are a buyer of startups. So if I'm a VC and I'm a startup, you've got to look at Oracle as a purchaser, a potential customer. And ultimately, we heard from Mike Workman today commenting on Pure Systems, Pure Storage, and saying, hey, you know, they got to go public. No one's going to buy them. This, everyone's been bought. So you have to figure out if a startup, if the, the bets are all made, you better get public or make money. Well, and it, it appears that the Oracle strategy is to subsidize the engineered system strategy you know, with software. Um, is that sustainable is the question. I, I think it is. I think it's imminently sustainable because people keep buying Oracle software, they keep spending money on R&D. If, if Oracle were turning off the R&D spigot in order to juice profits, I would be really concerned. But it's like Fowler said, people get rewarded for inventing new stuff and creating things, and Oracle's going to And Larry Ellison knows the paranoia of kind of an Andy Grove mindset, which is, you know, you can't rest on your laurels in Silicon Valley around the world. And certainly the China market we mentioned earlier is a huge opportunity, but also a threat. If you don't invent the future, you're going to be, you're going to be uh, out, of, out, out of luck. So I've said this um, a number of times. I, th I, think, I, think, I think Sun is the number one and number, number two or number three acquisition in the history of the industry. VMware is obviously the greatest acquisition in the history of the enterprise. I'm talking enterprise IT business. Never mind for a second, you know, Microsoft acquiring whatever, PowerPoint, et cetera, but enterprise IT. Number one was VMware. I would even say number two probably could be, could be Sun. Sun is buying for number two. I would put IBM's acquisition of PwC up there as well because it completely transformed IBM under Gerstner, but Sun is right up there. And I've been criticized for saying that. I said that early on. I started to understand what Larry and, and Oracle were trying to do. And, now you're seeing it pay off in a, I, I think yeah, a Anyone who's been around the, that generation of Sun knows the value. And they were getting hammered, and, and the culturally they were just, they needed, they needed a buyer, the white knight. Larry Ellison was the white knight for Sun. Sun's DNA is innovation based. We talked to John Fowler about the resurgence of systems programming. I mean, software led, software defined data center, software defined stuff is not mutually exclusive with hardware. That absolutely is very clear with this announcement. And certainly this integration middle layer platform is stabilizing. Big data is going to transcend all the different platforms, marketing cloud, exadata. Where a database can go, that's where the, <laughs> the, the middleware will play and that's certainly not just one market. So I'm pretty impressed, Dave. I think uh, it's always good to see Larry Ellison in person. 
and uh, Oracle's announcements. Yeah, and then uh, again, this stuff is translating into dollars. The, the Oracle's a cash flow machine, it's an operating profit machine, it's driving huge valuation multiples on top of revenue and, 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 and EBIT. And, um, and that is a strategic weapon for this company, which I've been saying for a long, long time. They can make acquisitions uh, in a way that um, uh, can be very effective. And they, what they did with Sun to me is amazing. They paid 50 cents on the revenue dollar. They, they brought them in. They had $13 billion of revenue. That revenue shrank. But they, they maintained enough revenue so that it translated, and we wrote about this on Forbes, into a 25 to $35 billion market value. So they yeah. paid seven. They returned. 30 billion to investors. I mean, financially, it's been a huge, huge win for Oracle. And I can't tell you how many people four or five years ago said, Volante, you're out of your mind saying that. You just don't understand. Okay. Well, Dave, great show today. Really awesome. And I want to thank Oracle and Oracle's team and the social media team uh, and Marius, uh, Paul, Julian, and all the, all the people we know at Oracle. It's been great to have you support us, to allowing us to come and, and broadcast at your event. Um, great wall-to-wall -wall coverage. Thank you to the Silicon Angle uh, Wikibon Cube team. Guys, thanks, and thanks for everyone watching. This is the Cube. We go out to the events, extract the seal from the noise. Dave, great show, and look thanks, for the Sean. Cube. Next time, we'll be out and about. Tomorrow, we got a Cube on the ground. We'll be at Ford and a bunch of other events, so stay tuned. Go to siliconangle.tv. This is the Cube, signing out from Oracle, live in Silicon Valley. I'm John Furrier with Dave Alon. Good night. Good night, everybody.